Cadiz brought her case before the Court of Appeals. She elevated her case from the National Labor Relations Commission through a petition for certiorari under Rule 65, and she brought her case up to the Court of Appeals. What is the ruling of the Court of Appeals? The Court of Appeals, however, dismissed her petition. No? So it was not... Uh, and the sad thing here is that the cause of the dismissal is more like a, not on the merits of the case, but on the procedure, no? technical defects on the petition for certiorari of Cadiz. So for those who have not experienced any case yet, when you appeal to the Court of Appeals, most of the time it's very strict. Uh, minor things like the stamp of the notary public in the verification is not readable that will cause a dismissal of your case or the you fail to attach registered receipts or there was a failure to place the PTR number of your lawyer it will cause the dismissal of the case so it's the defects are very technical but at the end of the day your case will be dismissed so this is what happened no? The Court of Appeals, however, dismissed her petition, referring to the petition of Cadiz, the employee. Her petition is this petition for certiorari under Rule 65 outright. What is the reason? Due to technical defects in the petition. What are the defects? First, incomplete statement of material dates. So material dates, normally when you write a petition, because the rules of court prescribes certain period where the lawyer or and the petitioner must comply in filing with the petition. So once you receive the unfavorable petition, you have a certain number of days where you have to file your petition. So when you file your petition, part of which is the allegation of material dates where you have to state when you receive the copy of the unfavorable position. So that is important because that will be the basis or the reckoning point in counting the number of days uh, as to when you filed your petition. So it will determine if your petition is late or not. If it's late, especially if your case is also very weak, most likely it will be uh, dismissed outright due to not only te technical defects, but because it is filed out of time, no? beyond the prescribed period. So that is the importance of statement of material dates. So failure to attach registry receipts and the failure to indicate the place of issue of council's PTR and IBP official receipts. So very technical. This is a very problematic thing if you are the lawyer because the reason for the dismissal is you. No? Uh, it does not mean that if you experience these things, no? it does not mean that your lawyer does not know this. Maybe sometimes by human error, CPR. So Kadi sought reconsideration of the assailed Court of Appeals resolution. So she did not agree with the Court of Appeals because for a layman, especially if you are not a lawyer, you would think those are very flimsy reasons. No? These are not real reasons. Why not decide on the case itself? But of course, when you appeal to the Court of Appeals, Supreme Court, you have to be very mindful with the dates, the registry receipts, the PTR, IBP official receipts, you'll be to be very careful with these things. So Kadi sought the reconsideration, support of appeals, but it was denied. <coughs> this is what usually happens, no? And the Court of Appeals further ruled that a perusal of the petition will reveal that public respondent in LRC committed grave committed no grave abuse of discretion, amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction. So normally here, no, which for me normally happens, uh, usually happens, if the Court of Appeals finds that your case is weak or it agrees with the uh, lower courts, it will. it's easier to dismiss your case for technical defects. But here, the CA also ruled, no, the, the uh, ruled that there was, as far as the Court of Appeals is concerned, the Labor Arbiter and the National Labor Relations Commission are correct, no? The Court of Appeals said that the NLRC, the Commission, was correct in its decision or that it committed no grave abuse of discretion because the abuse of discretion here must be grave, no? Grabby, not just ordinary or uh, ordinary abuse of discretion, but it must be grave. 
So the Court of Appeal said that there is no grave abuse of discretion. It is not clear that the Commission abused its discretion when it affirmed the decision of the labor of arbiter. So again, Cadiz, the employee, lost her case before the Court of Appeals. Obviously not satisfied, so she elevated her court, like her case, up to the Supreme Court. No? Because uh, the labor arbiter, the commission, and the Court of Appeals ruled that there was no illegal dismissal, that her dismissal was valid. Therefore, she lost. So she brought her case all the way up to the Supreme Court. Uh, the same argument, definitely, that her suspension, uh, indefinite suspension, was not valid and that she was illegally dismissed. No? So there was no cause for her dismissal and everything else. So basically, her objective is to get a ruling that she was illegally dismissed. And the work of the employer is to make sure that the ruling of the arbiter, the commission, the commission and the Court of Appeals uh, decision stating that there was no illegal dismissal will be maintained by the Supreme Court. So that is the job of each party. No? There is no illegal dismissal as far as the employer is concerned and as far as the employee is concerned to get a ruling before the Supreme Court that she was illegally dismissed. So we will find out what is the ruling of the Supreme Court. So that will be the topic of our next video. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.